In this video, we're going to be discussing topic 3C, which is reversible reactions in the IGCSE chemistry course for edXL. We're going to be focusing on the double content in this video. So if you are a triple student, make sure you check out the video on Equilibria on the triple playlist on this channel. So for this topic, it's actually very small. There's not much to it. So we want to know that some rever reactions are reversible and that we use this particular symbol. And we're going to look at how we describe certain reactions. So in our chemical reactions, what we need to understand is that we do not always go from reactants to 100% products. There are some reactions that can go to the products but can then be reversed to get back to your reactants and we call these reversible reactions and when we're using our equation we use this symbol instead so we may write reactants our double headed arrow and products and that simply means that our reaction can go from reactants to products or products to reactants. So because these can both happen at any one time, if I take a sample of my mixture, I'm going to get a mix of the reactants and products because some of them will have formed products and some of them will not have formed and some of them will go back to our reactants. So let's have a look at two key reactions that you have to know that are reversible. The first reaction is the dehydration of copper sulfate. Now you will have covered copper sulfate in topic 2H, if you chemical test, if you remember this was a test for water. So if you heat copper sulfate crystals, they will change from blue to white. And this happens because we are removing water. So we are causing the blue hydrated crystals to become white anhydrous crystals. And remember, anhydrous simply means without water. So when we react this copper sulfate or when we heat it, we're removing the water and it goes white. Now we know that we can use anhydrous copper sulfate as a test for water and that it will turn blue when we add water and that is because the reaction can be reversed. So once I've heated my copper sulfate and made it white I can reverse my reaction by adding water and it causes the blue crystals to be reformed. So let's have a look at what the actual equation looks like where well, we have our copper sulfate here which is our hydrated copper sulfate and it contains this water of crystallization and you'll have covered water of crystallization in a bit more detail in topic 1e the calculations topic but when you have this water of crystallization we heat the substance and we make this anhydrous copper sulfate which is going from blue to white if I then put the water back in and I add it as a reactant, I go from white to blue. So I can write this whole reaction like this and include my reversible reaction sign here. Now another one that you'll have met previously back in topic 1a and topic 1b, which is to do with diffusion, is ammonium chloride. So if you heat ammonium chloride, which is a white solid, what will happen is the white crystals will disappear and then they will reappear further up your test tube. So rather than the white crystals being at the bottom, as the, the reaction proceeds, you will start to see the white crystals forming near the top of the test tube. Now the reason for that is when you heat ammonium chloride, you are breaking it down from NH4Cl into ammonia gas, which is NH3, and hydrogen chloride gas, which is HCl. When they, these gases are formed, they then, of course, particles slide to spread out, so they will travel and they will move further up the test tube and eventually moving away from the heat and getting to cooler conditions, they will recombine 
and form that white solid. So this reaction is reversible depending on whether it is hot or cold conditions. So what does that look like? Well, we have our NH4Cl here, which is our white solid, and we heat the reaction, and that gives us ammonia and hydrogen chloride, which are our colourless gases. And once it gets further up the test tube, these colourless gases will then recombine to form the white solid. So the reaction can go between the reactants and the products. So again, I can write out my full equation here with my reversible reaction sign. So let's have a look at a past paper question on this. We're going to be looking specifically at the ammonium chloride reaction. And part A asks us to show how is this reaction reversible? Oh, that's very simple. We have to just simply look at the equation. And let's just say the equation uses this symbol. Or you can even say it has a double-headed arrow, which is the reversible arrow. Part B is then looking for the ammonium chloride being gently heated in the test tube, which is down here. And then after the test tube, it, so after the diagram, after the reaction has finished, the diagram is showing what the test tube looks like. And we have X and Y being pointed at. So here, this is our solid. And then here, these are going to be our gases. So identifying the solid X, well, it's our solid that we're using, and it is ammonium chloride. We've just simply reformed it at the top of the test tube. And the gases that are being formed, it's asking you to name them. So we have ammonia gas and hydrogen chloride. Okay. And which change of state occurs in the test tube during heating? Well, we're going straight from a solid to a gas with no passing through of a liquid. So this is known as subliming, which is D. And an experiment involving ammonium chloride can be used to show the process of diffusion. The diagram shows the apparatus at the start of the experiment. So we've got this diagram here and we want to show where A, B and C will form. So this is linking back to topic 1A, but we can still answer this question based on what we know. So we have ammonia solution and hydrochloric acid. And we know that our white solid is going to form as the ammonium chloride. And we want to figure out where it's going to form. Well, it's actually going to form at position C. So it's going to form closer to the hydrochloric acid. And it is because NH3 molecules have a lower mass than HCl. So NH3 has a molar mass of 17 whereas HCl has a mass of 36.5. So because the NH3 has a lower mass, so they will travel further in the same time. So if you were to time this for 10 seconds and see how far each of them have traveled, you will find that the ammonia has traveled further. You can do this as in the reverse and you can say that it will form at C because HCl is heavier so it will move less. Either one is accepted. And you can see that we've got our mark schemes here for those questions. That's everything on reversible reactions for double. As I said, it is a very small topic. If there's anything you're not sure about, please feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back on the channel soon.